Before we get started here, I just want to um, get into a little bit the uh, misinformation that's out there regarding Tony D'Angelo and Keandre Miller. There's been a, fl a fan blog out there that has stirred some things up, uh, basically saying that the two don't get along and there's issues. That is 100% false. There's no truth to it whatsoever. And for people to write things like that, other people to digest it, it's just wrong. It's sad, actually. Uh, Keandre Miller uh, was helped quite a bit earlier in the season when Tony D'Angelo was his defense partner. And uh, Keandre thanks Tony for the help that he gave him. Uh, there were some stories about a puck, Keandre's first goal disappearing, that Tony had kept it. Not true. The training staff has it. It'll be built into a, a plaque. and It'll be a, a given to uh, Keandre at the right time. So I just wanted to make sure I cleared that up. What was said on the blog regarding uh, dust up with these two fellas is completely wrong. And to have Keandre Miller pulled into this is, is really, it's really disappointing. It's disappointing that Tony D'Angelo was uh, pulled into this with Keandre Miller. And for the Rangers, we're going to work with truce. So I wanted to make sure I set that straight. Hey, thank you, JD. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you have any questions, please click the raise hand button and uh, due to the volume of requests, we're going to try to get as, to as many people as possible. Um, we'll start this off with Vince Mercogliano with USA Today Network. Vince, go ahead. Hey guys, thanks for doing this. I uh, just wanted to ask you, either one of you, if you could just clear the air and tell us what happened Saturday night and why you felt the decision needed to be made to, to waive Tony D'Angelo. Um, sure, Vince. Uh, listen, it, we had an incident that happened. Uh, it's in our room. We're dealing with it. This is one of the ways we're dealing with it. Uh, our team is, is ready to move on, but... Uh, um, you know, Georgie's going to back up tonight, and uh, as, you, as you know, Tony was put on waivers today and cleared waivers, so uh, our team's ready to move on. We obviously had an incident, and uh, we've dealt with it, and now we're ready to play the Penguins tonight. Next question comes from Rick Carpinello with The Athletic. Carpy, go ahead. Yeah, you there, Carp? There we are. Carp, we're still having trouble hearing you. We'll come back to you in a minute. Next question comes from Bruce Beck with NBC4. Bruce, go ahead. JD, Jeff, are you guys concerned about team morale in any way right now? Not a chance, Bruce. Appreciate the question, but not a chance. There's always things that happen during a season or uh, that you have to deal with. Uh, we want to make sure we have a great culture here, and we're working every day to make sure that happens. But as far as morale goes for this team, no, none, none whatsoever. Next question comes from Colin Stevenson with Newsday. Colin, go ahead. Gentlemen, to either of you, uh, has Tony D'Angelo played his last game for the New York Rangers, and, and uh, what, what will happen uh, going forward? Um, yes, he has played his last game for the Rangers. What happens going forward, I, I don't have the answer for that, Colin. Um, you know, he is, uh, he's been assigned right now um, um, to the taxi squad, um, but – you know, we'll look right now to, to see if there's another place for him to play. Okay, Carpy, we'll try you again. Hey, Carpy, sorry, it seems the mic's not working. We're going to go to Molly Walker with the New York Post. Molly, go ahead. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking the time. Um, I'm just wondering how much of Tony's past in juniors, you know, him getting suspended twice for violating the OHL's harassment, abuse, and diversity policy, which included racial slurs to a teammate, how much of that went under consideration when you guys traded for him in 2017? And was it addressed directly to him before you accepted him into the organization? Um. Absolutely. Uh, we did uh, a lot of research, talked to a lot of people um, about Tony prior to acquiring him. Um, everything went into to, uh, to it when we, when we did that. Um, so, you know, we, we did our homework. We felt comfortable. Uh, if you look at his track record on the ice with us, uh, I think, you know, his, his season spoke for itself last year. And, and uh you know, Tony. You know, there's 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 been a few things along the way, but but uh, really nothing that uh, would would suggest anything from his past and junior. There's been nothing like that that's ever come up with us. Next question comes from Larry Brooks with the New York Post. Larry, go ahead. So this seems to be a rather extreme response to one incident, and David Quinn 
said yesterday that it wasn't just one incident. So can you give some sort of background on what led up to this decision? Um, yeah, sure, Larry. Uh, listen, uh, after the first game of the season, uh, obviously he was, he was told he wasn't going to play. And you know what? We, we haven't been able – Tony wasn't able to move on from that. It was, it was something that he was trying to get through. Um, I, had, I had spoke to him at that time and said, listen, if there's, if there's any more issues here, the, the time is going to come where we're going to put you on waivers and, and move on. There's going to no more issues if, if, if we have to uh, – if your name is in anything at all uh, uh, that we have to hear, uh, we're going to move on. We're going to make that move. I made that statement to him. Something happened, and I pretty much have to stay true to, to my word here and the organization's word that it was time to move on. And that's, that's basically what it is. We, we feel like moving on from Tony is the right thing to do. It's about winning, and uh, we feel like this was a move that we had to make in our room to, to put us on the path to winning. Next question comes from Dan Rosen with NHL.com. Dan, go ahead. Yeah, yeah Jeff, two-parter. One, if he's on the taxi squad, I'm going to assume he's not going to be around a team at all though can you just confirm that's that? right that's correct um and the other one is you know there is a history obviously but last year was a really good year for him are you surprised that this has come up at this point this so early in this season yes yeah i i mean obviously we signed him right to a two-year deal um uh, and felt comfortable where he was where he was at where his game was at he obviously had a great year um so yeah uh comfortable with that Bad start. Um, he's not the only guy on the team that, that uh, had a difficult start so far. But, um, yeah, I, I'm surprised that it came to this. But this is the decision we're making. And, and like I said, we're, we're here to, to talk about it today, but we're ready to move on. Next question comes from Mark Rosenman with Sports Talk New York. Mark, go ahead. Jeff, you mentioned that you had spoken to him and said if his name came up one more time, you were going to have to waive him. Uh, there is language in contracts where if a, a player doesn't um, live up to certain expectations conduct-wise, um, you could actually void the contract. Is that the, something that's on the table right now? No, 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 not right now. We're not talking about that. We're, uh, we're talking about uh, finding him another place to play and uh, letting him move on with his career and, uh, and, and wishing him the best of luck. Next question comes from Stephen Wino with the Associated Press. Stephen, go ahead. Hey, Jeff. What exactly happened between Tony and Alexander the other night, and, and is Alexander okay? Alexander, he's backing up tonight. He's fine. Next question comes from Dennis Gorman. Dennis, go ahead. Uh, for J.D. and Jeff, uh, I think it's fairly well known that, uh, that Tony was active on social media and had some – uh, interesting opinions. Did that? Did those? Did his behavior on social media factor in in your decision making? No, I, I think that there's a fine line, obviously, with social media, but there's also freedom of speech, and uh, we we certainly watch what our players say and do on social media. Uh, Tony, we've had informal discussions about it. There's always a trickle down effect. There's always people that get uh, offended by things. Others spread rumors and innuendos. It's, it's a difficult uh, thing to police, but that had nothing to do with this. I, I might add too that um, some time ago, I had Tony into my office at the training center. We had a real good conversation. And my feeling was that with Tony, um, we, we had to try to help Tony. Uh, Tony's got a lot of good attributes. Sometimes he gets in, in his own way, which has happened again. And we had to make it clear that if something came up again, that something's going to happen. And that's exactly what happened. But I felt it was very important to, to have a chat with Tony, to talk about life in general, to talk about his own future. And it was a good discussion in my mind, from my point of view. But um, something happened again. You're all very well aware of it. And we have to stay uh, with, to our word, uh, as Jeff had mentioned. So we've had to make this, uh, make this um, deal by putting Tony on waivers. Okay, we have three more left in queue, and those will be the final three. First, Abby Mistraco. Abby, go ahead. Uh, what kind of a message, this is for Jeff, what kind of a message do you think this sends to Tony, and what kind of a message do you think it sends to the rest of the team as well? 
Um, well, I'm not really looking to send a message to, to Tony. Um, it's just that we're, we're moving on. We're, it's about a team here. We're building a team. We're trying to become a team uh, as quickly as we can. And I just felt like this was a, becoming a distraction, and, and we're trying to stay true to our word here. You know, we told a player that, you know, enough is enough. Let's move on. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like uh, this is the necessary move that we had to make. Next question comes from Vince Mercogliano. Vince, go ahead. Jeff, just to clarify a little bit. So it's, you're saying that after David made the decision to bench him when he took that penalty in the first game, that he basically reacted poorly to that? And, and did he cause scenes in the locker room? I mean, like what, what kind no. of behavior was it that, that led to you guys taking issue with that? Um, no, it was just something. It, it wasn't anything that, uh, that he did in the room. He wasn't slamming six or anything, Vince. It was just, it was just time. It was just another thing like uh, the penalty, the reaction to the penalty, um, all of it. So it was just, uh, it just added up to a decision we're making today. So I wouldn't dive into it any more on, on any other issue. This is just uh, a decision that we just, we just make and we're moving forward and, and now is the time. And final question for JD and Jeff comes from Colin Stevenson. Colin, go ahead. Gentlemen, if I could ask a non-Tony question. Uh, we see that uh, Koppel is on the COVID list uh, today. And, um, you know, he has an underlying condition, I believe. So I just wanted to know if you can tell us a little bit about how he is and, um, you know, and if, how, what this means for him in the, in the next uh, little while. I mean, other than saying he's fine, I, we really can't. Uh, the rules are very specific, uh, Colin, about what we can and can't say about somebody on the COVID list. But I, I will say he's fine, okay? 